Welcome back party people. My name is Daryl Wilson and today we'll be talking all about web design proposals. Now, this is one of the most important tasks when you are trying to sell your services to a client. In fact, this is probably the only opportunity that you will have to present yourself to your client. So today we'll be talking all about proposals. So we'll be talking about what to include in your proposal, how to write a proposal, examples of successful proposals, and software that you might want to use to create proposals for your web design clients. And guys, when I first got started, I just got a piece of paper, wrote some stuff down and gave it to them. And boy, that was a mistake. And I'll explain why in this video. But first off, let's discuss what is a web design proposal. A proposal is a detailed summary of what the web design project will entail. It's an introduction of your company, what you can do for the client, how you will help the client and their business. A proposal also informs the client how you will solve their problem. It should have a quote, which is the price of the project and a time frame of how soon the project will be completed. So let's dive in on what your proposal should include, what it should look like and how to get a professional proposal for your business. So today's episode is going to really help you. So I'll be showing you, you know, how you can design your own proposal like this and include whatever you want. I'll also give you examples on other proposals and give you my personal opinion about those proposals. But first off, let's talk about identifying what should be in a proposal. So number one, identifying their problem that needs solving. So remember, you're here to help them. They're coming to you saying, hey, Daryl, I need a new website. How can you help me? Why should I choose you? And this is kind of where you, you know, you'll show, okay, you know, we're going to show you how we're going to fix it. We're going to do this. We're going to give you a great plan. We're going to skyrocket you up here. We're going to make you look professional. You really want to make them feel like they're getting their money's worth, you know, in a nutshell. And then number, that was number two. Number three is plan the web design process and show them a detailed timeline so they can understand about web design and web development. So you want to tell them what you're doing now. Try not to overcomplicate the process. I mean, you can to make yourself sound more professional, like, oh, we're going to integrate a big UX and we're going to make it a really simple UI and we're going to bring in the development team and they're going to be working around the clock. You can do that, you know, if you want to go that route. I have no problem with that. That's just personal preference. I always like to talk to them like they're a human being. Sometimes people like that. And uh, actually, we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Uh, number four. Show relevant information about your company and the project. So now you'd be like, okay, look, uh, this is what I can make. Here's this portfolio. Uh, we have the staff, here's their credentials. We got this award from this other company. We have testimonials, we have recommendations. All of this stuff should be included um, in your proposal. And then of course, number five. Now the guys, this is so important. Include a price and an opportunity for them to sign it. So. As they're reading this proposal, this is like a, an upsell. You're selling them at the same time. So let them pay with their credit card right away. You know, don't leave an opportunity to just like, oh, okay, that's a cool proposal. Uh, where's the bill? And then, you know, they have to go look for it. Maybe tomorrow, like, hey, you know what, don't forget about it. I, I don't want to know more. You just lost your client because you didn't have the signature and credit card. Now, the signature is very important. So this is going to help you against chargebacks, guys. I have been charged back myself. I think a lot of other designers have. So you want to make sure you get that signature. I cannot stress that enough. It's very, very important. So basically what the signature will do is that let's say, for example, someone buys your web design services for $2,000 and then later down the road, they say, hey, no, Daryl, this sucks. I want my money back. And I says, no, I can't do that. So then they call their bank and then they charge it back. The signature will help fight that. It'll help protect you to keep the money there and saying, no, you made an agreement and you're gonna follow with that agreement. So that's why you'd want to include the signature to help prevent chargebacks. And again, I have been a victim of chargebacks, so I know all about that. It really sucks waking up and seeing a negative balance in your PayPal account. So trust me, I have been there. Um, so protect yourself from chargebacks. So now that you know what it includes, let's dive into the structure of a proposal and give you some different formats. And this, this was, um, I like to call this like the mirror effect. So basically whoever you're talking to, you need to adjust your personality for that specific person. Let's say for instance, you're talking to a single mom, you know, in an apartment and she wants a, you know, and she wants a, a, a proposal for her beauty business or something like that. You wouldn't send her a proposal that looks like you would send it to Facebook or it's to Oracle. You know, you'd want something a little bit more simple. And we'll be talking about three different proposal styles at the end of this section, but you want to adjust your proposals from who you're talking to. So for example, Scorpion, Scorpion does the SEO for Facebook. I would send them a proposal that looks something that looks something like this. You know, I want a really 
detailed proposal that looks super you know professional that we can really sell them on and we can look professional and corporate and really get their business but if for, for someone that's just kind of like you know like a single mom that just wants a website we can give them options you know and you'll also get this proposal it's in the actual um the evernote so this is a proposal that's just giving them some options like we can do option one two or three because you can't you know have this mega corporation approach to these people because they're just gonna say you know what this is not for me i thought this was something different so again you want to go ahead and mirror yourself to basically who you're talking and i have done that a lot in my web design career so now that we actually uh we know what the proposal should include okay so now let's talk about the structure of the actual proposal so i like this structure in particular so the first section you'll have an introduction about yourself so hey guys my name is daryl wilson and thank you for choosing us and you know you guys are amazing whatever all right so yeah that'll be section one is the introduction of you and your company number two identifying their problem so you'll say you know what uh, our client has this problem and this is what we're going to do to fix it and we'll make this a lot better than what it is right now number three show the approach on how you will fix the problem so show some sort of amplification you know like we're going to do this we're going to add this to your sites we're going to give it this nice style design this new 2020 gradient modern style design something like that number four tell them what you're going to do and how long it's going to take it's very frustrating when you're paying someone money and they don't know what you're doing it's like well what are you doing you know so explain to them what you're doing and the time frame and then number five, show the example works and portfolio. So now that you've showed them a little bit about, you know, what you're going to do, give them an example, you know? So have you done this on other websites? Yeah, I have, here it is. And then they see it and, oh, okay, that looks good. And then number six, sign it and pay me. So you want to make sure that you have the signature and payment at the bottom. So you want to get them in the heat of the moment kind of thing. You want to get them right away, you know? So now let's take a look at a proposal and let's critique it. Now there's three different proposals here. There's one from Elementor, there's one from Harvard, and there's another one from freecodecamp.org. Now these are all in the description of this Evernote. Now I don't take credit for any of these at all whatsoever. I did not write these. So uh, I just want to make that very clear. So you can go ahead and visit these websites and check them out. But let's critique these proposals really quick. So this is a proposal and they start off without an introduction. So web design proposal. Okay, so who are you? I don't know, they didn't include that. So that's why you'd want to include an introduction. So next is the challenge, what our client needs. Now, I don't like the wording they chose here, uh, what our client needs. It just sounds like a piece of paper, like here, here's the requirements, you know? I like something different, you know, like what we're gonna do to make your business thrive, you know, how we're gonna help you. I would go with that approach and having this corporate, you know, uh, anti-personal approach. I feel like this is too, um, it's too distant and you wanna make sure that you, know, you warm up to your client. So the challenge of what our client needs and then they just give them some things like we're gonna create a landing page for them and uh, what they need and all of this stuff. So, okay, that's helpful. Our proposed solution. Again, I would word that differently. You know, I would, you know, that's just my personal preference. Um, I would just say, you know, what we're gonna implement it or something like that. So we propose an interactive page that will include all of the features uh, specified by the content and then so on and so forth. So this is good. You know, they added some um, information on what they're gonna do and how they're going to fix the client's needs. So let me scroll down. The solution will require the following resources. Now, I, I, I'm i sort of against this right here because half of this stuff, the client doesn't know what it is, you know? And, and when you say this, uh, require the following. You know, I don't think they need to know that personally. And it just sounds like they're just like, oh, this is the client, they require this. I, I kind of am against that, but that's my personal preference. But here they're just saying what they will need. You could word it differently saying, what well, we're gonna add to your website to make it look vibrant. And then you can list that. So I think maybe they should have reworded this a little differently to make it sound a little bit more friendlier, I guess you can say. And then they have their proposed schedule, which is good. I like that. And then they have our quotes. Now, uh, this is incorrect. So the reason why this is incorrect is because where is their portfolio? How do I know if they're good or not? Well, in this specific template, what they did was they put the they put it all the way down here in this tiny little text. So you'd want to put the portfolio above the pricing. So here we have the actual uh, structure. And remember, you want to have the works and portfolio before the price and the signature. So 
Uh, make sure to do that. So in this specific case, I think they got this wrong. I think they should have put the portfolio above the pricing just, be just because uh, now we can see what they can do. So the portfolio will hype them up and then it's like, okay, sign it, sign it, go. Boom, you got yourself a client. So this proposal right here would be ideal for a business to business or another agency. So I like this proposal. I like the style and design of it. I think it's suitable for business to business or a medium business and that's pretty much it. So next let's take a look at a corporate proposal. So on the bottom right here, we have this mega corporate proposal. So this right here would be an example of a mega corporate proposal. So this obviously is a proposal that is written for a much higher scale business. So I'm not gonna go into it too much because there's a lot of information, but they're just being extremely detailed because when you're dealing with a lot of cash, you're dealing with like contracts and you're dealing with exactly, you know, what has to be uh, what done to the website because they're paying you a lot of money. So in this case, you can go ahead and take a look at this specific, um, you know, this specific proposal and just understand what they're trying to do. And um, yeah, you know, I personally have never a proposal this big, but you know, if you're dealing with a very large scale client, you might have to. And then number three is the personal proposal. So uh, over here we have the personal proposal and this right here is an example of it. So, um, you know, I'm using Mac, so it looks a little distorted, but if you're on Windows, it'll look a lot better. So it just basically says like who we are, the project overview, and then some different project options. And just, you know, this is for like the practical person, you know, somewhere like me where I'm just like, hey man, I'm just living, me and my girlfriend want a website together. What can we do? This would be something a little bit more ideal. You give them options and you help them out with their budget. So now that I've shown you all a proposal, I've shown you what to include in a proposal and examples, let's go ahead and talk about a real life example of a proposal that you should send to your clients. Uh, this right here is just something that I was talking about with another friend and that was, should you ask your clients about what their budget is? I don't know, but uh, that controversy uh, goes on and uh, I have another video on a questionnaire. So if you wanna go ahead and check out that video, I will leave it in the description below of this video. I don't like to ask clients what their budget is. I just think it's inappropriate. I don't like it, it's, it's not welcoming. So the reason why you want these proposals and to make them sound good and great and you wanna make them feel comfortable is because remember, referrals are the number one way to get more clients. I don't care what anyone says, referrals are the number one way to get more clients for web design. So now that we've shown you about all that stuff, these are some websites that you can use for um, setting proposals. There's proposable.com, pandadoc.com, and all these websites. So I chose this website right here. It's called proposable.com. And I liked it because they have really good integrations. They have really good templates. And this is an example of a proposal of what you can send to your client. So this is proposable.com. I'm not an affiliate. You guys can go check out the website. I've actually used PandaDoc and all these other websites, but I just found that this website just was a little bit more simpler. They had better templates and for a much better price. So here's the web design contract and we're starting it off. And on page number two, we have an introduction. Yes, and this is a template that you can get for free um, from this website. So I like the fact that they introduced a um, an introduction of the company, which is really, really good. So then you can talk about your company and all about it. And then the next section, project. So this right here is sort of a, um, you know, it looks like a portfolio, but they are talking about the actual concept of uh, what they're going to do so you can swap the images and fix this around and they're just you know it's a template guys it's a template all right come on what are you stupid so then let's go to the next page deliverables so uh, what they're going to do and the time frame and all of that stuff so that's helpful of course i would reword all of this i would not leave it like deliverables i mean i don't even i've never talked to someone like that oh where are the deliverables at like what's you know like what, what, what are you stupid and then right here, they have web design fees. So uh, they're gonna have web design fees. And this is a great upsell right here. Guys, please, in my other video of Deals with Daryl, we talked about recurring payments. You want to make sure you include your SEO packages, all the goodies in there, just plug them in there, you know, and then have them on a recurring basis saying, we're gonna have an SEO plan, we're gonna have a maintenance package, a content writer, your, your stuff's gonna look so good, oh, it's gonna be crazy. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, you know? So you wanna go ahead and insert your recurring stuff in there in your proposal. You want to tell them that, um, yeah, we're gonna include this and it's gonna be great. So now that there is the price, let's go to the next page. And then here they have a web design agreement. 
So these are the terms and conditions and I wouldn't have it like this. So what I would do basically is let's say there is another proposal. I would just link them, you know, just link them somewhere. So just have like a little link somewhere, like kind of like how these guys did at the bottom, a brief sample of our portfolio. Just go ahead and just give them like a, a link and that's their, you know, and that can go to another page, but I wouldn't have it in this proposal because this is too much, way too much. So yeah, don't have the terms and conditions in there. Have a link with a checkbox saying, check this. Okay, good. Because this just looks really messy and cluttered, right? So yeah. And then let's go ahead and scroll down. So after they check the box and they agree to the terms of service, right? Let's go to the next page, agree and sign. So they can agree and sign and there you go. And when they get the signature, they can actually go ahead and pay it. Now I have an example of this same uh, proposal being sent to an email. So let's imagine now I'm a client for the very first time and I just got a proposal. So here we go, let's go to my email. There we go. So new proposal from Daryl Wilson. All right. So, you know, I'm, I'm a normal customer and I'm checking out my proposal. View the document. Let's see what I got here. Let's see what Daryl said. Let's see what he's going to send me. Now, I like this because um, on the right side, you can actually comment or question on certain parts of the proposal. Like, hey, Daryl, I didn't really understand this section. Can you go over that? So I do like the fact that they have this really clean interface for your clients and it makes you look really super professional. So here we go. We have uh, all this stuff right here. So we'll go ahead and just go through here and read it saying, okay, all right, cool. Uh, terms and conditions. All right, awesome. Okay, of course, the checkbox, right? And then we'll go ahead and sign it. So I already signed this. And then on the top right, we have an invoice or on the bottom, we have an invoice. And look at that, submit the payments. I can click on that and make the payments and bam, we are done. We are done. So now you have the contract signed, you got the cash, you are all ready to start the website. So when you have proposals, include the price and the signature in it to protect yourself. Okay, and them, you know, protect yourself and them, you know, because you might be a dirt ball who, who scams people. I don't know. <laughs> so you want to make sure that everyone here is protected. All right. So this is an example of an amazing proposal and I'll leave a link to proposable.com. Uh, it's a great website. And so this would be like an ideal situation on proposal. So uh, I think this is a great proposal. It's stylish. It helps them, you know, explain what it is. And this is a builder. So you can build this proposal. You know, you can drag and drop images. You can do that and a gallery and all this stuff. So you can build the proposal as you need. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for web design proposals. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And again, when I first got started out, I wrote something like this to them and it was terrible because I got charged back. And when they charged me back, I'm just like, um, what happened guys? You know, it's like, oh, you know, I, they should have just said I got screwed and that was the end of it, you know, so. But uh, in a nutshell, that's proposals. Hopefully by now you guys have some, you know, good knowledge of proposals. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. Hopefully by now you guys have some direction on where to go with web design proposals. It's a big opportunity and also you really want to make sure that they sign it and they pay you because you want to protect yourself at the same time while you're doing business with your client. So. Good luck with your proposals. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you guys in the next video.